Hello, welcome to part two of this week's speed paint video. My name is Jask, and in this video I will be covering the coloring portion that I did for these two lovely boys. In the previous installation, I did the line art for them and talked a little bit about how they met and how they became boyfriends. I also talked a little bit about the party's circumstances in part one, which I will link in the corner if you haven't seen that or if you would like to watch it a second time. For now though, I'm going to talk about Darnick's design, and then I will get into more of the party's current circumstances afterwards. As Zahn is not my character though, I cannot offer much input as to what went into his look or his personality, so I will not make any claims in that regard in this video. Darnick is a tiefling draconic sorcerer. His mother was also a tiefling who got jiggy with a blue dragon and had her darling little blue son in the middle of her own adventure. As he is a strange mix of creatures, I did some self-indulgent things with his appearance. His bones, horns, teeth, nails are all a dark blue, maybe even a dark bluish emerald if you're a stickler about colors. The inside of his mouth is entirely black, and even though I did not draw it here, you'll see a little bit in the references that I pull up throughout this video that Darnick has an extremely long blue and yellow forked tongue. His teeth are all sharp and quite sizable as well. He has horns on his elbows as well as protruding ankle bones and talons instead of toes and a really thick tail with a plumed end. I'd like to think that he got his blue skin height and uh, curly white hair and the tail plume from his mom, while the shape and the color of all of his horns, scales, his eye color, talons, and tail thickness from Dragon Dad. Maybe his teeth too, but I haven't decided who gave him the teeth. And I also haven't decided who gave him that monstrosity of a tongue yet, but the color most likely came from Dragon Dad. Going into Darnick's initial concept, I started with one idea. A tiefling draconic sorcerer with electric blue scales that covered his shoulders and face. As you can see, the electric blue did not make it into the final version. There was far too much blue in the design, and it was difficult to make the scales pop how I wanted with everything being so monotonous. So I changed the color to match the horns, and I made the lines for the scales yellow and purple. He also ended up getting a lot of tattoos, which you will see me put on in a little bit. The Raven one is the most recent, which he ended up getting from the literal Raven Queen. She appeared to him in a dream, and when he woke up, a raven mark had been left over his belly, assimilating with the other tattoos to look like it was a planned addition. I, as a player, do not know the significance of this quite yet, but it's one of the more notable parts of his appearance now. And I like ravens, so I'm not necessarily sweating it. I had a good time incorporating it into his design, so I don't mind it at all. All in all, my goal for Darnick was to make a tiefling who had some real gremlin vibes when you saw him. They aren't as apparent when he's holding his delightfully pretty boyfriend, but every other time that I draw him, he's got his tongue sticking out and he just looks like a gross little blue man. Now, at the end of the last video, I mentioned how the world's supercontinent Pangea ended up breaking apart, and that the party was dealing with that. We set sail across a brand new ocean to get back where we came from. To continue from that point, we made a boat. Darnick had been the only one in the party on the ocean, and he has the only manner of being exposed to people building boats, sailing boats out of the entire party. So it was up to him and the NPC who had been with us when the world shattered to build a boat so we could get out of this situation. Luckily for us, we did a very good job and now we're in the middle of the ocean. We don't know how big this ocean is or how long it'll take us to cross it, but you know, we're as prepared as we can be, given the circumstances. 
However, we were not prepared to encounter other ships along the ocean just yet. We ended up coming across a vessel that was aimlessly floating along. It was not traveling very fast, and obviously, since there was no real direction to where this ship was heading, we decided to investigate it to make sure everything was okay. Upon closer inspection, we discovered that it was filled with the slaughtered remains of a crew of some sort. About half of us opted to investigate the ship further, and then the other half remained in our little dinghy in the water, tied to this boat. But we thought we might be able to find some supplies, or, you know, maybe some maps. Not that a map would help us, given that the world was now broken and all maps were now significantly outdated, but regardless, we decided to investigate the ship. Darnick went below decks and discovered a big old door that said do not enter in several different languages. So naturally, he went and told the rest of the party aboard the ship that he wanted to go inside the door. We entered as a cautious group, but were met with a regular looking cargo hold. There was, very suspiciously, a chest in the room with another sign on it that once again told us not to open it. Our rogue, Midnight, checked to see if it was trapped and discovered that it was. But even with a natural 20, he was unable to determine just how it was trapped. We deliberated a bit over whether or not we should open it when our cleric, Levy, stepped forward and opened it up herself. Turns out that this was not a good idea. The chest released, as our DM called it, and, as I am paraphrasing, a ripcord of necklace of fireballs, as the chest was trapped on the inside and none of us could detect it. This was absolutely catastrophic. The rogue and the NPC dodged the fireballs, but Darnik, Zon, and Levy took the force of however many fireballs there were, as well as all of their damage. Darnik, being a tiefling though, only took partial damage. He should have taken half, but the DM was merciful and had him only take one quarter of the fire damage, which left him with one hit point left. If he hadn't given quarter damage to Darnik, the damage would have been exactly enough to instantly kill him. Zon and Levy were not nearly as lucky. Both of them were instantly killed, and Levy was nearly entirely incinerated. The ship had a hole blown into it, and we were rapidly beginning to sink. Darnit carried out Zon's corpse to our little boat while Midnight took what he could of Levy's remains, and we were almost immediately spotted by another ship who was presumably also sailing over to see what this random ship was doing so stationary, and we left off at that point. We have two party members dead, one heavily injured, and no way to resurrect either of them. That makes this art, in which Darnik and Zon are both really happy and very alive, quite sad. Luckily, our DM was rather transparent with us because he didn't see this coming. We only ended up so far away from home because we were sent into the north on a job for a duke. So we need to get back to where we came from so we can report what we did and the job that we finished to him. DM told us that when we reach our destination, we will be able to use our assets to resurrect both of our party members, and that we should not encounter any problems doing so unless we really fuck up. This isn't to say that the Duke is going to shell out the whopping 10,000 gold per res that we need, but supposedly we have the means to bring both Zahn and Levy back. Which is great, but we don't know how long that's going to take, which is not so great. In the meantime, Darnik is a horrible mess. He feels entirely responsible for what happens since he is the one who opted to open the door in the first place. 
If he hadn't, nobody would have found and opened the chest, so he's shouldering the blame for both party members' deaths, even if it wasn't directly his fault. The death of his boyfriend is going to leave quite the lasting impression on him, as it very well should. I do not see him doing well for a number of weeks, even if we do manage to get Zahn and Levy back up within a good amount of time. He was protective of Zahn before, but now I can see his tendencies to protect becoming a potential obstacle and something that he needs to learn how to tone down for the sake of Zahn. He obviously cares for Zahn very much, and he does love him. I'm not sure if he's in love with Zahn at the moment, but there definitely is love there, and Darnik isn't going to risk anything like this happening a second time. This boy's got some character development on the horizon, but as to what's going to actually happen with that, I don't know. We'll have to see. For now, though, I've run out of things to talk about, and I'm nearly out of video in which to talk about them over. I've got some ideas in mind for some sad post-resurrection art, so when I draw those, I will talk about what happens beyond this. But for now, those are our current semi-unfortunate circumstances, with semi-unfortunate art to go with it. So here is the final product, the boys in all of their glory. I love them both very much, and I'm sure they will be showing up in more than just one more speed paint in the coming weeks. This piece is also available as a print and a sticker on my Redbubble, as well as some other art I've done in the past, if you are so inclined to have it in your hands. I greatly appreciate you coming by and listening to me ramble and watch me draw. If there's anything you would like to see me draw, or any questions you have about the characters in this video, let me know and I will be happy to respond. I hope you'll join me for more videos like this in the future, and as always, thank you for your time and attention. I will see you next time.